Hi, and welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. My name is Sarah Dora Mudger, and I'm IHA's Goal Care and Development Manager. And today with me, I have Jaden Pine Murphy, who is the goalie coach for the Australian Senior Women's National Team. Welcome, JPM. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Oh, pleasure. Okay, so the accent gives it away. I'm going to assume that hockey for you started way back in New Zealand. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, back in New Zealand, grew up in a small, very small town called uh, New Plymouth and uh, only in line there. So um, I, I grew up playing in line uh, right from the very start. I think I started, I was about nine years old. Um, and yeah, I went up until, just played in line throughout my whole youth until I was about 17. I got my first uh, taste of being on the ice. Um, and then, yeah, from there, that was kind of it. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of people have got the same kind of background. Um, yeah, right. Being from New Zealand and Australia, you know, um, ice being very limited and, and things like that. So, um, yeah. Same, same, but different. Uh, when did you become a goalie and why? Yeah, pretty, pretty uh, quickly, actually. I think it was, um, you know, one of the first trainings I went to, I just remember went to the first training um, that my dad took me to after, after a public session when I saw a few, um, few boys um, hitting around a puck and I just instantly knew it's what I wanted to do. Um, so it got me to a few training sessions. Um, the first or second one, I, I noticed the goalie gear and that's really what caught my eye was just the gear. I thought it was awesome. Um, and then I think it was a few more trainings after that. So a few more weeks and, um, they just asked who wanted to have a go at goalie and I put my hand up and that was, um, kind of it ever, you know, just straight from the start. <laughs> and then stuck to it since. Yeah. Did you ever get any specific goalie training at all? Um, very little when I was growing up. So, um, you know, a few clubs in New Zealand, they had, um, you know, Canadians who had moved to New Zealand, things like that. And obviously when they come to, when you see them at tournaments, yeah. they were way above the others, um, you know, masters or, or senior men players and things like that. So they would, you know, they would, they would run a few camps here and there and, and in line, but that was kind of it. It was always yeah. just myself, just watching, uh, watching NHL, watching videos wherever I could find them and, and things like that. So, um, and then, and then just, you know, the, the coaches that you had as parents who would, um, have an eye for things and say, you know, try this, try that instead. So um, very minimal until I was about 17, 18. I got my first um, uh, proper goalie training um, in Canada on the ice. So, yeah, it was uh, a little bit, uh, little bit of a jump. So, okay, so how did all that come about going to Canada? Yeah, so when I was, um, when I was playing in line, um, I had to move, had to, so moved from New Plymouth to Wellington for study. Um, okay. At the time, there were a couple, there were a couple of different inline teams there that were um, getting, well, trying to get me to play for them. And one of them was um, run by a Canadian lady, and they always used to get again Canadians in as well to to uh, try grow the sport and develop mm -hmm. the club as well. Um, so they would always do coaching. Um, so she said, "Look, um, you know." come here, play for us, you'll get to know these guys, build relationships, and, and within these two years, we can try and um, sort out a plan to get you over to Canada, where you can just be on the ice a little bit more, try out for a few teams, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, within that time, she also did some hunting for me too on you know specific uh, goalie camps. And so the first one I went to was when I was just in just moved to Wellington, so I, was, I would have just turned 18 mm -hmm. um, down in New Zealand. So I went to... Um, went to a camp in Dunedin and um, the goalie coach at the time there, he was a, an ex ice blacks goalie. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was in preparation for another camp that she found for me in uh, Montreal, where it was um, run by Francois Lear, who's um, <laughs> a pretty renowned goalie coach um, in the goalie world. And, you know, uh, coach of uh, Patrick Roy, uh Jaguar, et cetera. So, um, yeah, that was really cool. So I got to, uh, she, she organized the whole thing for me over there. Um, I actually got to um, stay at his house for the week leading up to the camp. So, oh, that's so awesome. 
Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty. An, it was a pretty eye-opening experience for me. Um, you know, staying with somebody um, who's known that well in the world, and, and especially in, in goaltending. You know, so um, that was very cool. Um, here's a his basement where where my room was set up, and all their spare room was absolutely incredible. He had you know photos from all his teams. You know, Montreal Canadiens, Anaheim Ducks um, from over the. 20 plus years of, of coaching. Um, as a, he had his ducks uh, cup ring down there. His, um, you know, uh, some seats from the original Montreal Forum. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a pretty um, it was a pretty special trip, um, including the the training itself. So yeah, that was cool staying with him for a week, and then obviously being coached by him for for another week and a half, and and just being in that environment with. Um, very high level uh, goaltenders at the same age as me um, was just uh, was pretty cool. So no kidding. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm a I'm a little bit envious right now hearing all that. That's just yeah. way cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, at the time, I just thought it was cool and didn't really think. I guess I didn't really think much of it until I actually left, and then it was like, well, that just actually happened. So yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Was very was very lucky. Um, so yeah, I guess that was kind of the. That was the most goalie training I had growing up. And then I, I went to his camp, I think, a year or two later, like once I moved over to Canada as well. So I got to right, um, okay. got to see him again and do the whole co- uh, go through the whole camp session with him again, which was great. How did, how did you, coming from New Zealand and not having such a huge ice background, how was it like in that camp with the other goalies? Like, how did you compare? Was it intense workload for you or was it easy to adapt? Uh, yeah, it was definitely intense workload. Um, I wasn't, you know, I'd never gone through anything like that before. Mm. Um, New Zealand training camps and, and things like that would be, you know, a long weekend of two two sessions a day. So you'd only be on the ice, you know, for three days, six times. Whereas this was, I think it was seven, eight days and it was two on-ice sessions, two off-ice sessions a day. So... It, it was pretty intense, um, but we all lived there, and it was nice and easy. It was done at a done at a college, so the rink okay. was there. We, we all stayed in the dorms and things like that. So, um, and and they managed it really well. So, um, you know, they they gave us exactly what we needed in terms of you know our, our sessions. With they could have just been recovery or you know um, getting us prepared for our on ice sessions. Mm. Um, you know, lots of food, etc. So, I mean, it was um, it wasn't. It was intense on the body, but as well, they kind of took um, took control of everything and, and took all the thinking out of it for us. So I yeah. was, was able to get through uh, just. <laughs> nice. Okay, so you mentioned you moved to Canada. Was that for the hockey or was it for further your studies? What was the situation? Yeah, it was just to, just to get on, um, just to further my hockey. So um, okay. again, uh, I'd been in Wellington for two years. I'd only been... I think to two training camps in New Zealand um, on the ice and then, you know, the one with uh, Alaire. So in two years, I'd only been on three times and I knew it was something that I wanted to do was um, okay. to play more, play more ice. So moved over there with a couple of friends and, um, you know, we, we had a few connections there. So we moved to Edmonton of all places. Um, so it was pretty cold. Um, okay. And yeah, we just, um, we just got set up there. They helped us out. We got on to, you know, just trial for teams, um, just got on the ice as much as we could, um, stick and puck, drop-ins, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we just, we just did that when we could. We were 19, 20 at the time, so we had to work as well. So it was, um, it was, it was pretty intense as well. Well, what were you doing for work? Were you doing the typical work in the snow fields or...? Nah, so because we're in Edmonton, we're in the city, so um, we just picked up jobs, you know, working in, in retail and things like that. Yeah, right. and, um, we got a pretty good summer job. Um, so me and my friend, we did um, irrigation, so residential irrigation, and and we actually met the two guys who um, own the company. Um, it was a, a a dad and then his um, son-in-law. They, they ran the company and we met them out um, the night when Canada won the 2010 Olympics. So um, we started talking to them at a bar and um, yeah, we just spent the night with them and they, um, we, you know, a week later we talked to them. It was, or um, well, a week later they called us talking about summer and obviously that line of works in the summer. So um, 
well, they said, yeah, do you guys want to come work with us? So it was, uh, yeah, it was good. Hockey, um, uh, you know, forming relationships again. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Okay, so how long did you stay in Canada? I was there for two years. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it was a pretty quick stint. Um, I was just on a uh, working holiday visa, so... Yeah, right holiday visa compared to Australia I think you guys get two so um, the next year I was just on a, a visitor's visa um, okay. obviously got a bit hard and things like that so moved back home and then it was kind of perfect timing so it was trials for the um, ice blacks or New Zealand men's national team yeah um, so went for that and uh, made the team which was great um, so it was the first time I'd played or, or been selected for the team nice. uh, um, and then, yeah, we went away to Worlds with them. Uh, I think it was about six months later. Um, went, went to Worlds with them in Iceland, which was absolutely incredible. Um, loved, it, loved it there. Um, we played in Reykjavik. And um, then, yeah, so just did that, came back, and then moved to Australia. But um, the whole plan was to only be here for a couple of years and try to... <laughs> and we've still kept you. Why, uh, yeah. why Australia? Why, why did you come across um another very interesting story so yeah just trying to get back to canada um going through the whole visa process and i just thought you know come over to australia try something new and i was hoping it was only going to be again yeah for a couple of years max and i was like well look it's um pretty good spot you can hockey's good and um a little bit more money to be saved, I guess. So that yeah, was right. kind of the, those, are, those are the drivers um and then yeah that's it Awesome. Okay, so seven seasons now in AHL, um, yep. with both Ice and the Mustangs. What's it been like for you? I mean, we you've obviously enjoyed it. We've kept you that long. Yeah. Um, no, it's been great. I mean, it's um, to play something like that at this, like, like, you know, this part of the world. I think it's um, pretty rare. I, I didn't actually expect it to be. Um, as high a level as it was, to be honest, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to, I don't know, be be so, I guess, involve so much commitment, you know? Uh, I think yeah. if you talk to everybody who plays in the league, um, especially here in Melbourne, I don't know how it operates uh, exactly everywhere else, but, you know, you have um, two ice sessions a week, um, you'll have your gym sessions as well, and then you're away on the road or you've got two games on the weekend here or on top of fitting it into a, um, a work schedule as well. It's, um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, it's good. And, and I like that it, it keeps growing as well. I mean, take this year completely out of it, yeah, um, yeah. but, but everything with the league is growing as well. And, and I think just hockey in general in Australia. Okay. So when did your coaching career kick off then? Um, yeah, I guess it kind of kicked off pretty soon. Um, and you know, my, my inline days. So I started coaching, I think I was, would have been about 16 or so with, um, right. me and a couple of my friends, there was a group of five of us and, um, we're all on the same team. I think we're in the under 16s or under 18s. Okay. Um, and the, I don't know how it came about, but the, we ended up coaching the under 10 team. So um, we all nice. we all kind of put our hand, like, we're like, oh, we could do this together. I think they needed a coach. It was, I think it was the first year it was everybody in the under 10s had, um, had never played before. Um, and I think somebody kind of pitched it to us. Um, and, and we actually did that with our coach at the time as well. Um, and she was... Um, she would have been in her mid twenties or okay. you know maybe late twenties, so we're pretty I guess similar in age and, and things. So she was kind of the, the head coach, and then there was a, the four or five of us who um, yeah. were all assistants, I guess. So we had a big group of assistants. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's kind of how that's kind of how it all kicked off. So pretty pretty soon on. Awesome. Okay, so with all that along the way, you are now the goalie coach for the Australian women's national team. How did that even come about? You've been there for, what's it been, four, five tournaments now? Uh, four. Uh, four? four? Yeah. 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 So, so how, how that come about? I think I kind of fell into that too, to be honest. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, one year they had a national, they had a training camp here and um, I think it was the year yeah, it was a year before they went to uh, Haka in Spain. 
and I think they they won gold that year. So I just went down. Um, Emma Poynton, she yeah. she was the, um, the manager. She's the manager, at the time. yeah. Yeah, she, you know, being being from, she was president from Melbourne Ice too. That's how I got into the Melbourne Ice through her. Um, so we we knew each other obviously for a few years um, and pretty closely. She she just asked me if I wanted to come down and help them um, over the long weekend um, if I was doing anything. So I said, yeah, for sure, I'll definitely come down. So um, came down, helped out um, with the girls there, and then you know they went away to Worlds and and everything like that. And then the um, Next year came along again, same kind of thing. They asked if I wanted to come down and help out again. They said they really enjoyed it last year. So um, I said, yeah, I did. Um, I'd want to. And then they, um, I think at the end of that weekend, they kind of asked if I wanted to go away with them. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> it, was a, it was a big surprise. And I just said, well, yeah, of course. Um, it was pretty soon. I was just said, look, oh, I'd love to. I just need to um, clear it all up with work. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, here I am, I guess, yeah, four more tournaments later or another three tournaments later and uh right. that's kind of uh, how it all happened so okay so what's it been like i mean i know i'm you're listed as equipment manager really you're there as a goalie coach and everyone knows that and, and we all whenever we go away on these things we all hold multiple roles as we do anyway but there as goalie coach what do you do because it's not like you've got your the girls they've been selected on the team it's not like okay i'm going to revolutionize your playing style right yeah, you can you can only do so much in a short space of time. So, what does it kind of look like when you go away with the team? Yeah, exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. It's you know I'm a goalie coach, but you know the, the girls have been working all year with their their individual goalie coaches and or their own person by themselves doing their doing their own thing and working all year to improve their game and their style the way that they have. So, um, for me, it's about you know knowing that learning that um seeing you know a few weaknesses in there everybody has weaknesses and then just really getting them mentally mentally prepared and confident i think when you go into worlds the the biggest thing you need is to be confident in your own abilities you've been selected into the team um for a reason um you can do the job it's just you know doing all the little one percenters along the way to uh to get yourself you know mentally ready and and you know really really trusting and, and being confident in yourself you know um i know the first year that i went away for new zealand i i didn't have that confidence at all because i didn't have that goalie coach you know it's um when you're by yourself and you're just with another goalie partner it's a competitive environment um you know a friendly competition but um you know you you kind of always critiquing yourself in your own head and if you don't have anybody to um, vocalize that with it it's very hard to to find those um find those progression steps along the way and and get you get your game ready um so really that's that's kind of my role i like to see it as um you know i'm not there to change anybody's style or say they're doing this wrong or this so I, I just like to get them comfortable and you know point out the the little things that nobody else would ever see that you know they could um they could save a they could save yeah. a game goal you know um and then that could that could change your your, your uh, the whole team's um meddling position so yeah 100 percent. It, it is i think at that point it's very much is just a mental game as well and I, I think the role of the way I see it, the role of the goalie coach away at a tournament, you're there as a sounding board. So the goalies, because it's such a different game they play, even mentally, yeah. to have that support, someone that gets it and they can talk to. And if there's anything that, you know, positive or negative, right, that they, yeah. they know that there's someone they can go and talk to and try and resolve an issue or make it better. So I guess then in that case, I know you've got a good relationship with the staff on the team and, and especially with Stu. So how much input do you get in the practice design and in what the goalies do so that they're not neglected? Yeah, Stu's um Stu's really good with that. So um he he'll ask me what I need and and things like that. You know, at the start of training he's he's really big on letting me do what we need to do to get them ready. Um and then and then during the training, obviously, it's all about the team. So it's um, what they need to work on. But he he does make sure that there's a you know they are getting a lot of action and they're not they're not sitting in cold. And he you know he double checks with me is this going to be a good drill in, in this time etc. So um, he's um, he's a coach that's um, really really aware of what goalies need, and um, he's always he's always double checking that you know I've got enough to to give them that. Nice. That's that's really good to hear, and I really hope that that happens 
even more across the board, across all the teams, not just national teams in Australia, but just everywhere, because I, I think that's really crucial. Uh, so with four, four tournaments under your belt as goalie coach, you've had a few goalies come under you. What's, what's been highlight moments for you? Um, honestly, the way that they all work together, to be honest, um, the girls have, that I've had, I've been lucky to have, or sorry, the women that I've been uh, lucky to coach, they're just great teammates. Um, they're very supportive of each other. Um, they they work really well together. You can see them um, encouraging each other on the ice, like during the games, uh, things like that. So that's actually been a really big highlight for me. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to be in those environments too um, a lot of the time. So um, just to see that naturally come in too, um, you know, put egos aside, you know, two goalies in a national team that are obviously the best goalies for, you know, the area that they're in or, or whatever and used to getting 100% or close to 100% game time and then suddenly you get into a national team where that's not the case and it's, it's, um, it's no disrespect but it's just part of the, um, part of the position, right? And um, for them to put that stuff aside, that's, um, that's always been, you know, a, um, something great to see and, again, it uh, just happened every year. So it's um, been really good. Yeah, and then, you know, no big deal, but you won gold this year as well. Yeah, so <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, great. There was, uh, yeah, it was, I think, I think there was a, um, a bit of pressure on everybody, you know, to win that, to win that medal. We, uh, we obviously didn't have a good year the year before, got relegated um, and came down and, um, you know, we had, a, we had a very young team again. Um, you know, we had two new goalies this year um, who hadn't played in the, at that level before. And, um, yeah, there was a, I think there was a bit of pressure, but we didn't, we didn't feel like there was pressure and the whole team in general didn't... Mm -hmm. uh, you, you just didn't sense that with the whole team. They, um, they really gelled together as a team. And, and look, I think uh, everybody could see that. Um, um, I, I don't know what your thoughts were on that as well. <laughs> obviously, obviously, been there. You you saw it from an outsider's perspective. Um, oh, it's, it's a yeah. No, it's it's a it's nice playing against the Aussie girls. I mean, because they're all my friends too, right? But yeah. even and and it goes back to just uh, the culture of the team and how supportive everyone was. I am not on that team. I played against the team. But everyone was so supportive of me, you know, even after the game and after the tournament. So, like, it, you know, I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an Australian team member, but I'm not. Because they certainly made me feel that way. And, uh, you know, the, the game against you guys that was only 2-1 was definitely my highlight game of my career. And now I'm retired. So <laughs> You played a great game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was, yeah, it was yeah, good fun. <laughs> yeah, well, it meant so much to me, right? Uh, yeah. But this is not about me. Um, so, uh, who knows what's going to happen next year, but let's talk about the future. There are a whole lot more female goalies coming up in the ranks. There's a lot more competition in Australia. What are you looking for with the goalies that you take away? What is it that goes, yep, you, I want you on my team? Yeah, I think it's um and and that's amazing that there's more goalies coming up and it's you know it's a um it's a rare position in a sport, um, especially to find good goalies in a minority sport. But then, but then as well, um, the aspect of female sports side, you know, it's always um you know less numbers in males. So it's 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 so good to to know that there are um, more goalies coming through and and good ones as well that are that are at similar ages and pushing each other and, and looking up to each other as well. So I, I think the, the position is bright um, for the future, but I mean, for, for P things that we're looking for, I think it's, it's just, it's not really a, the way that you play your technical ability, things like that. Obviously you've got to be a good goalie to be in the team, but when you get to that level, it's um, just being the, I guess being the best you that you can and, the, and mm -hmm. that you can break that down into a few different ways. So, um, you know, preparation wise, performance wise, obviously for yourself, um, you need to be the best version of you in that, that area because you want to go away. You want to be on a team. You want to, you want to deliver and be like, I, I did the best I possibly could to, to get this, you know, to get this team into the spot. Um, but then as well, um, 
being the best you was being the best teammate, like I said, um, yeah. about the, the goalies I've had and, and just the NWT, NWT team in general, just all great teammates, you know. They, they've got a really good, um, really good culture that they've all created from themselves. Um, that's all comes from within the locker room. So they, they all really love and support each other. And then as well, um, being the best you, being coachable as well. I mean, it, it, again, it's... I, I, I've touched on it before, you know, you get to, you may be the best team, you may be the best goalie in your team or your state, um, you know, growing up, um, but then you get to the national level and you're, you're obviously picked in the team for a reason. You're, you're valued, you're respected, um, but you may not get the game time you think you, you think you deserve. And, and that's all those decisions only come down to what's best for the team. So um, that's the next thing that you have to do is put that aside as well. So um, yeah, just coming in with an open mind and, and yeah, just being the best you that you possibly can. Awesome. That's, that's really good to hear. And I, and I think this kind of goes across for all players as well, that there are perhaps some players and goalies in Australia that have never been cut from teams because we just don't have the depth. But then you get to the national stage and you might end up in the fourth line or you might be, uh, I mean, I don't want to call it the backup goalie because it's not... Yeah. It, you know, it might be an even split, it may not be, but they've never been in that situation before or been challenged that way. And, and I think that's where you know if they're going to make it or not make it, right? Yeah, but, and then, but that's also part of development too, right? Like you, to, to see improvements, you've also got to maybe take a step back here to be able to take two steps forward, you know, rather than staying at that same level the whole way through. Um, so you've you've just really got to look at it from a, from a, from maybe the try take a, take yourself from being inside and, and look from the outside looking in, you know, and, and see the bigger picture and, and just always, always try take something positive out of anything and something that you can learn from because that's always just going to make you better. 100%. Awesome. So I, I know with the cancellations of tournaments this year, uh, it, who really knows what's going to happen next year, but when things do get back to normal again, uh, I do wish you well. I hope Australia gets another gold and then they can move up to where they should be. Um, and yeah, thank, thank you so much. And I look forward to, to working with you, you know, in, in some sort of capacity down the line and just supporting the program the best way that, that I can. Yeah, awesome. No, thank you so much for having me. It's been great. And uh, yeah, hopefully um, we can uh, keep working together for a long time. Awesome. Thanks so much.